everybody, welcome back to Piece of the Pie Vlogs. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own chunky knit blanket just like this one. Now I have seen these in all kinds of home decor stores recently, but they can go for about $70 to $90. So if you're not interested in investing that much in a blanket, but you still want to have the look in your home, you can do this for about half the cost and learn a new skill at the same time. Now don't stress if you are not a crafty person, that is okay. I'm going to share all the tips and tricks with you that I have learned along the way. I've only been making these blankets for about three months and now I've made seven of them. So if I can do it, I know you can do it too. Just bring a little bit of patience to the table and have some fun. So if you're interested in learning how to make one of these for yourself, a friend or a family member, keep on watching. So the great thing about this project is that you don't need many materials at all to create a beautiful blanket. But of course, you are going to have to have some yarn, which is the most important thing you have to have. And today I'm using the Bernat Big Blanket Yarn from Michaels, and this is in the color Vintage. So before you head on out to Michaels to grab some yarn, make sure that you check their store inventory online. This is a very popular type of yarn, especially for this project. And because people need it in such large quantities, it often sells out. So just check online before you head on out to store. You can also see if it can be shipped to you. Of course, you're gonna need a nice pair of scissors to cut your yarn when you reach the end. And I went ahead and picked up a sewing kit. This is not essential, but I needed some needles, thread, and a threader to attach these little charms. They say made with love. I'll give you a close up of them. I wanted to attach those at the end of a blanket. I saw another YouTuber do this, and I think it's just the sweetest little touch, especially if you're gifting it to someone. So that is why I had to get that sewing kit, but if you already have those or you don't wanna do that, of course you can um, just not pick those up. But I really did like that it came with this flexible measuring tape, which is great for measuring out the size of your blanket and making sure that it's going to be just the perfect size for you at the very end. And these three items at the bottom are also optional. A marker and a post-it note. This is to actually write down how many loops long or how many links long your blanket is so that when you're counting, you remember. So you can just keep that if you want or if you're good at remembering, you don't have to have that. And the tape and the hair clip are actually very interesting and I'll show you how I use these a little bit later. Lastly, the only other tools you're going to need are your hands. So let's go ahead and get started learning how to make our blanket. So go ahead, grab your yarn and take off that outer piece of paper and throw it on away. You won't be needing that any longer. And then once you've done that, flip it on over to either side. This side looked a little bit more open, so I didn't think that the beginning of my yarn would be in there. This one, I started kind of fishing around a little bit and I was able to find that tail end or beginning. So that's what we need. And you might have to untangle your yarn a little bit and that's fine, but definitely don't grab from the middle. It's usually always tucked in on the ends. Now you're going to want a nice big table to work on your blanket. I highly recommend that over doing this in your lap. I've tried it in my lap and I've made some mistakes. So get a nice flat surface and taking the tail of your yarn in your right hand and the rest of the yarn in your left, you're going to take the tail and throw it under the left hand. We're gonna call that the working yarn, the stuff that's attached. You're going to throw that right hand underneath the left, kind of making a ribbon shape. And again, this is where that nice flat surface comes in handy to be able to lay things out and see them. Now what you're going to do to create your first loop, you're going to take that working yarn, tuck it underneath the ribbon and pull it through. So here you'll see it nice and slow and I'll repeat it. But I like to do this with my right hand, taking the working yarn, pulling it up, out, and through. And you might have to switch the direction that your loop is going to kind of actually see that chain forming. So if it doesn't look right, switch the direction. But there's your first loop. So let's try that one more time. Go ahead and pinch your ribbon in your left hand. Take that working yarn in your right and push it up and out through that loop. Now take a look at where your yarn is. Remember, you might have to switch the direction that your chain is in. Your little tail should be going away from your ball of yarn because you're going to build your blanket towards your yarn every time. So if that helps with your direction, just keep that in mind, you're building towards your yarn. Now to grow your chain, you're going to use a pinching motion using your pointer finger and thumb. So go ahead and grab those pinchers 
push them through the loop you just created. And with that pinching motion, grab the working yarn, pull it up, out, and through. And you'll see your chain is starting to grow. You can use the tail at the end to tighten it a little bit, but you'll want to make this first row of loops on the looser side. You don't want them to be too tight. So let's go ahead and do this again using your pinchers. Push through the loop, pinch the working yarn, bring it up and out. And that is how you build your chain. Now just continue adding loops to that chain you've already created. Here you're gonna see me working really quickly, but don't worry you guys, this is all editing magic. I do not work this fast. So don't worry about your pacing, just relax, take your time, and make sure that you are unraveling plenty of yarn to avoid any tension, which will cause your loops to be tighter than you want. But once you have the desired length of your first row, go ahead and grab that measuring tape so you can actually measure how long it is. You can actually compare it to one of your favorite blankets that you already own to make sure it's the perfect size for you. So I'm just measuring here, not including that little tail end. But this is where this notepad and marker come in handy. So now I'm going to count the loops that I have, and you could do this as well. This is important for when we start making the second, third, fourth rows, and so on so that as you're making those rows, you stop every now and then to count and make sure that you haven't missed a loop because if you miss a loop, your blanket will taper in. So I've got 32 loops and I'm going to remember that. All right, so we've measured our length, we've counted our loops, and now we are ready to make our second row. So take your last loop that you made and just turn it upwards and kind of press it flat on your table so you can visually see that you are creating a second row. Then go ahead, reach across and grab your yarn and move it to the other side of the table. So in this case, I'm now going to be building to the right. I'm always going to be building and adding loops going towards the yarn. Now to add loops to your second row, make sure you get out those pinchers again. And you're going to kind of lift that top loop up from the original chain and pull the working yarn through that. There's a top loop and a bottom loop on that original chain. Make sure you're grabbing through the top one and just pulling right on up. Remember, we wanna make our loops even sized and it might start to look a little funky at first, but just kind of work with it and be patient. As you add more rows, it will start to take shape a bit better. So just continue this process. Here you can see the top loop and the bottom loop. We don't wanna pull through the bottom one. Pinch through the top. Once you reach the end of your second row and you're ready to make your third, you're going to take that last loop and go up one extra. So every time you reach the end of the row, you're making two loops, the one you've already included, and then one more to kind of make it a little bit taller. You'll visually see that that extra loop starts your next row. So there we go. We've switched our yarn and we are ready to go on row three. Now that you've got your third row all set, go ahead and add one more loop. And here's where the little trick with the tape and the hair clip comes in. If you're new to making these blankets, what can happen is as you build your blanket, these end loops tend to fall out if you're not paying attention to them. So I really like the clip, it's my favorite little trick. Clip those two loops at the end together, that way they're nice and secure. And when you end up turning around and coming backwards for your fourth row, you'll be able to just grab around back and remove it. Nice and easy. Of course, you can do the same thing with the tape. I would recommend that you stick it on the back of your hand though to remove some of that tackiness so it doesn't mess up your yarn. But you can just tape those two loops together and then remove it again when you reach the end of your fourth row. So hopefully one of those little tools helps you avoid any lost loops in your blanket as you're creating it. So it's lots of fun to start to see your blanket coming together, but don't forget to stop every now and then and count your loops to make sure that you have the same number as when you started. And another little tip, if you flip your blanket over and smooth it out, Look for any random loops that are sticking up. Those would be ones that you missed in that row. 
So you could either go back and redo that row or you can just tuck it in and chances are nobody's gonna notice. If you miss one loop, it is not the end of the world, so do not stress. These blankets are very flexible and stretchy, so they won't taper in too much if you just miss one. So once you've reached the end or the last of your yarn, no need to panic. All you do is go ahead and grab your next ball of yarn and lay it out on the table. So here I've made my last loop possible and I've got this little tail, got my new yarn, and I'm going to take the tail of my new yarn and get, make a little X. This part is easy. You just make a standard shoelace knot once and then twice. Now you can take both pieces of the yarn and tug gently on each end to tighten the knot. Don't pull too tightly or it will rip. And then you're gonna have those little tails around your knot. You can cut those off now or save them for later, but don't cut too closely to the knot or it could fall out. But then from here, you just continue to make your loops as you normally would. There is gonna be a knot in your blanket, that's how these are, but again, it kind of just blends in with all the texture. And here's a little problem solving tip. If you ever find yourself seeing two pieces of yarn that are parallel to each other, don't sweat it. This just means that some of your loops have fallen out from the row below. So use that shorter piece of yarn to re-loop your loops and then you'll be back on track. So don't worry about it, it happens. So from here on out, all you're going to do is continue to add rows to your blanket until you reach the desired length. Don't forget to keep counting those loops, flipping over your blanket to make sure you haven't missed one. But again, if you did, it is not the end of the world. Don't unravel seven rows just to fix one loop. But I do understand if you're that kind of person and you just want it to be absolutely perfect. Totally fine. But you can hide it if you don't want to go back and fix it. Now once you've reached the end of your blanket, here's what you're going to do. Once you are happy with the size of your blanket, go ahead and set yourself up for another row just as you normally would. Make that loop there a little bit bigger than normal and go ahead and add in a second loop. Now with your second loop, kind of pinch it, put your hand through the first one, grab the second loop and pull it through. I'm gonna do this again several times. So create a loop. Pinch the second one, push it through the first, and tug up a little bit. Create a loop, send it through the first one, and tug. And you'll start to see it creates this really beautiful braid, and it finishes off the edge of your blanket really nicely. Now this is going from left to right, let me show you how you do it from right to left. The process is exactly the same. It's just easier for me to visualize and hopefully easier for you to visualize, depending on where you are ending your blanket. So here we go. We're gonna send the second loop we made through the first. Create a new loop. Send the second one through the first and you'll start to see your braid form. And I actually had a knot at the very end of this corner, and you can see it just kind of blends right on in with that braid. And once you've braided all the way to the end and made your last little loop there, you're gonna grab your pair of scissors and cut off the remainder of the yarn, because we don't need that anymore, and you're going to be left with a tail. So with the end of the tail, go ahead and poke that right through the last loop to create a standard knot. And kind of using your hand, scrunch that knot so that it is as close to the blanket as possible. Then you're just going to loop it around one more time on its own and create that knot. Again, pushing it towards the blanket so that it's not sticking out. And now your blanket is nice and secure. You can knot it however many times you'd like. I just did two. And you're welcome to cut a little bit more off of the tail, but what you're gonna end up doing is just weaving it through the edges of your blanket to give it a seamless look. And then you're all done. 
All right, so at this point, your blanket is completely done and you don't have to go any further. But if you are planning on gifting this to someone, adding these little made with love charms that I got at Hobby Lobby or you can find them on Amazon, it's a really nice touch for that gift. So if you're interested in learning how to put these on, you can keep on watching. So to get started adding your charm, you're going to want to grab your threader and your needle. And if you've never threaded a needle before, uh, that's okay because I didn't know how to before this. So what you'll do is you'll slide that needle on, then your thread goes through the threader loop. So you can see me modeling that here. And then you'll take your needle and carefully slide it off the threader, pulling all the way until your threader comes off and then you're left with the thread in the needle. So knot it at the top a few times just like I did to secure it on there. And then at the very end, the other end of your thread, knot that several times so you get a nice little chunky knot so that when you pull it through your blanket, it doesn't just come right on out. Now with your little tail that is left, go ahead and weave that through the edge of your blanket. Take your needle and poke through that little tail end, securing it to another piece that's already on the blanket and pull all the way through until your knot stops the thread from pulling. Go back through one more time, but stop about halfway and grab the little thread loop that's there, poke the needle through it, and now you're creating a nice little knot so that that stitch is locked in. And I like to repeat this a few times just to make sure that it's all going to be nice and secure. Go ahead and add in your charm when you're ready. Make sure that the words are the right side up. Push it all the way down so that it's against the blanket. And right next to it, you're just going to follow the same steps going through and making that knot. so that your charm is nice and secure. And I would do this at least three times to make sure that charm isn't gonna fall off. So all you do is pull that loop over the needle to create a little knot. And here's how it looks. Of course, you can cut off any extra threads too. All right, everybody, so that is it. That's how you can make your very own chunky knit blanket for about half the cost of the ones in home decor stores, which is pretty sweet. And this process is a lot of fun. Just be patient with yourself and pace yourself out. This is something you can create or finish up within several hours. You could work on it throughout the day if you took several breaks, or you could just stretch it out over several weeks. Whatever it is you decide to do, just make sure that you're having fun Put some Netflix on the TV, grab a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, and just enjoy the process. Now, one more tip before I go. I did wanna mention that you can totally throw these into the washing machine and dryer to keep them looking nice, bright, and clean. So in your washing machine, I would choose a delicate cycle or your lowest spin cycle with cold water. You can still use your laundry detergent, your softener. I would just avoid using bleach on these, but then over in the dryer, choose your lowest heat setting or the air dry cycle if your machine has that available. Those are all the tips and tricks that I have for you today, and I hope that they're able to help you create a beautiful chunky knit blanket on your own. If you have any trouble making your blanket or you have a question about something that I mentioned, please just leave it in the comment section down below and I will definitely reply and do my best to help you out if you're having any difficulty. And if you found this video helpful, I would really love it if you would just give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this one. But until I see you guys again, stay nice and cozy.